audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Everyone who is born again has received a spiritual gift for ministry. The anointing that was upon Jesus flows through his body. That's us, the body of Christ. Sometimes, you know, we hear the expression, oh, that preacher is really anointed. Well, the fact is, every Christian, without exception, is anointed. The question is, what are you anointed for? This is Set Free with Ken Legg. This week, we're diving into the subject of spiritual gifts, and particularly discovering your spiritual gift. Welcome, Ken. Now, well, some people, I think, stress out a bit about this whole question of what is my ministry? You know, what, what am I supposed to be doing? What does God want me to do? What, what, am I, what are these gifts that I've got? Is it supposed to be that hard? I feel, no, that's a good question. Uh, you know, it's so true that we can turn what is meant to be a very simple and natural thing into something that is complicated. Now, the will of God is not complicated. It's not a reward for those who struggle, sweat, and strive to break through, to get an answer from God, and to get the light to break through in, into their lives. First, let me say this, that there's a difference between our gift and our ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the word gift is from the word charisma, which is, of course, from the word charis, which is grace. In other words, it's something we receive from God. And the, the gift is a capacity or a function. For example, we might talk about the gift of healing or the gift of serving. So that's where we're going to operate. Now, the ministry is the sphere in which that gift operates. Let me, let me try to illustrate that. Um, Peter was an apostle. Mm-hmm. He had the gift of, a, a, of an apostle. Paul was an apostle. He had the gift of an apostle. But they had different ministries. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. That was his ministry. And Peter was an apostle to the Jews. That was his ministry. So one of them obviously leads into the other. The gifts that you have are going to... Going to lead into your ministry. Into your ministry. That's, That's right. right. Uh, but our ministries can be different even though we've got the same gift. See, I, I'm a teacher, but I, you know, I cannot communicate with little children. I just don't seem to get through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too ancient, Phil. <laughs> but um, others have got the gift of a teacher as well, and, and they, they've got a ministry to children. They communicate very well, but whereas I tend to teach adults and, and even pastors and leaders... Uh, and so our ministry is different, although our gift is the same. Okay, so if, if people listening aren't quite sure what their spiritual gift is, how do we find it? What, what advice do you give them? Well, when Paul teaches about spiritual gifts in, in Romans chapter 12, he challenges us to come to a sober estimation of our gifts. In other words, to think rationally, to think logically, to think sensibly. Get real. Get real, that's right. Don't leave your brains on the shelf as some Christians tend to do. Don't get super spiritual about it. Be spiritually natural and naturally spiritual. I like that. You like that? Mm. Uh, There's no copyright on that. (laughs) Now, you'll be surprised how easy it is and how natural it is to discover the will of God. Okay, how? What, is there some particular logic we apply, some rationale? Is there a test that you can do? What do you do? Well, I think the first bit of advice I would ask when somebody comes to me and says, you know, what's my gift? What's my ministry? The first question I would ask them is, what do you like doing? What do you like doing? You know, see, God gives us the desires that are uh, in accordance with his will. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I remember when I first got saved, you know, this uh, well-meaning person that sort of took me under their wing a little bit said, Ken, now that you're a Christian, it's not your will, but God's will. And so straight away I thought, well, my will is bound to be diametrically opposed to whatever God wants for my life. So it's going to be what I don't want to do. You know, I thought he was going to make me marry someone I was not attracted to because that's his will for my life. I had this sort of real bad concept of the will of God, you know. And we we sort of carry that over into ministry as well, that God's going to ask us to do things that we don't really like doing in ministry. Well, that's crazy. You know, the Bible says that he gives us the desires of our heart. That's because he put those desires there. And those desires actually awaken the gift that's within us. Now, okay, you know, before I was converted, before I became a Christian, I was at enmity with God. And so I wanted to do things that were contrary to what he wanted for my life. But now I'm born again, I'm indwelt by the Spirit of God, and, and I delight 
in the Lord. Mm. I want to do what God wants me to do. I love that verse, you know, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. On, on one side, yeah. first reading you can say, okay, delight yourself in the Lord and therefore I'll get what I want. Yeah. But actually when you think about it a bit deeper, it's more like delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires. Yes. He will give you those things. He will plant those yes. things in you, in your heart. That's great. And, and they will be lined up with his will. Yeah. So he gives them to you. And yeah. that, that's a process, but you've got to do the first thing, delighting yourself delighting in the Lord. Delighting yourself in the yeah. Lord. And, and yeah, that's right. And, and I think the New Testament says the same thing. The Bible says it's God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So mm. what I'm willing to do is the result of God working in me to do his will. Yeah. Uh, let me give you an example. I mean, those uh, that know me know that my gift uh, is, is that of teaching. I'm a teacher. I, you know, I, I love teaching. I love to share the, the truths of God's Word. Now, before I was saved, I wasn't even a student, Phil. I, I mean, seriously. I mean, I I remember uh, sitting my history examination, for example. I, I got four out of 100. Oh, that makes me feel really good. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, you know, the teacher on my report said, I don't think Ken is trying which really confused me yeah. because all the other teachers said that I was very trying. <laughs> you know, so, but seriously, I mean, uh, God did something in my life when I got saved. He put a desire there yeah. to study yeah. and to communicate with others what God has revealed to me. Now, for example, today I can spend three quarters of an hour studying the meaning of one word. And I don't think it's time wasted. You know, for me, it's like I'm loving this. I'm getting so much out of this. Why is that? Because this is the desires of my heart and the mm. desires of God's heart. I, I delight in him, and he's put these desires in my heart that really coincide with the gift that he wants me to function in in my ministry. Mm, that's fantastic. So it's what you're saying, though, that we should pay attention to our desires, those things that, that we have that we know innately that are there in the first place, or do we get a replacement set? No, I, I think it is. Is you know, as I said to you earlier on, there's nothing. You know, let's be naturally spiritual and spiritually natural. Let's let's see what's happening in my life. What do I like doing? Where where are my desires taking me? Because that's where you're going to keep coming back to is those desires that are there because God has placed them there. Mm. One of the things that really encouraged me, uh, I know that many listeners will be aware of the ministry of uh, Steve Apparana. Uh, he's up on the Sunshine Coast. He's got a great ministry. And I remember uh, watching a, a video t- testimony of Steve. Oh, it goes back decades now. And he was a bit of a crossroads in his life. He was a social worker, if, I, if my memory serves me right, but he's really unhappy, you know. And he went to someone for counselling and uh, he said, look, I'm doing this, but I'm not really fulfilled. I'm not happy. And this person just said to him, well, what do you like doing? He said, oh, what do I like doing? I, I like music. You know, I, I like to write music. I like to play music. I like to sing. I like to lead people in worship. I like recording. This is what I like doing. Mm. This guy said to him, well, do, do it. it. <laughs> do it. And he's never looked back. He's been doing that ever since. And, and what a coincidence. It happens to be what? You know, gift God has given to him to to be a blessing to the rest of the body of Christ, and and I think if we would examine the desires of our heart, we will find something of the gift of God within us just by that simple exercise. You know, when you think it through, I mean, He's given us those abilities and things in the first place. Yeah, and sometimes they do lie there dormant, and we don't get it. And then an opportunity like that comes up where somebody just challenges you with some thought. Maybe that's happening right now with somebody who's listening and they're thinking, yeah, yeah. you know what, I should go and do that thing that I'm good at, yeah. or that thing that, that I really love doing. Um, you know, and other times there are seasons where you've got to, you know, be in the job that maybe isn't the right fit and the timing isn't quite right yet. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, as Steve said, and, and as I can testify in my own life, when, when you find that slot where that God has for you, that gift that he's given to you, you actually enjoy doing this. It's not like someone is driving you to serve the Lord or, or making you sacrifice for him. It's like nothing is, is too much because mm. you're just enjoying doing what you're meant to do because you found your place in the body of Christ. You're functioning in the role that God has for you and there's this incredible fulfillment. And we'll have more for you tomorrow as we look at discovering our spiritual gifts. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage because God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.